I'm going to walk through how I set up my new teacher training this year, and I think it worked out really well, um, and I really liked how I kind of organized it. So what I did is I first had a one pager. So this was just a resource for the staff. I had a bit.ly with the link so they could access the material, the one pager, and it was just kind of a resource that they could either print or have that click all the links that they needed were on here. Um, so over here, I actually had a link to the actual slides. So that way the teachers could interact with the slides and complete different links. But I like to kind of, again, just have this one pager so they know who to connect with, the first kind of questions that they might have, what support they needed, and then a list of our technology programs um, that we have available in our district. And then what I did is I had a wonder wall and I just explained to them kind of the purpose and what we were going to be learning and our goals. And so you can see the time lined out. So we first did a fast and curious because I just had to go over some procedures and directions with them. And instead of me lecturing at them, I used a strategy from John Crippo, which is Edgy Protocols Fast and Curious. Um, and you actually see their score on the next page. And then we did a mini lesson and I introed a game. So we actually kind of played a game and they had to complete six different tasks in our game. And then at the very end, we reflected. So for the um, Fast and Curious, right here on round one, they scored a 66%. And then by round two, they scored a 92%. Uh, and then I just kind of ex again explained how they could use Fast and Curious in their classroom. So what they did with the Fast and Curious is there's just a lot of procedures. So I took the website quizzes and on quizzes, I just added all of the different information that I was supposed to go over um, with them. So it was like a slide deck that just is a quick technology overview. Again, a lot of procedures, just things that they need to know. And they had to answer all of these different questions um, correctly. And I actually told them I, I don't expect them to get 100 because this is new information on that first try. And so when they went in and did the quizzes, again, they scored that 60%. And then what I did is I reviewed the answers, the questions that they missed the most. Like, for example, they all knew that I was their tech coach, so we didn't need to review that. Um, so any of the questions, and they all knew that their students had Chromebooks, so like we didn't need to talk about that. So I used that data to help explain different procedures in more detail. And then what was cool is they did it again, and they actually scored higher. So they got to see how they were kind of in um, retaining that information. And then after that, I just explained my role and how I could support them. So I used this coaching um, menu that I got from Sarah Huff. And in here, I just kind of went through like how I can support them with goal setting or how I've done reflection with teachers, co-taught with teachers, modeled lessons. So I just kind of explained to them how I can support them this school year. Um, so that was, again, just like a resource for them to kind of know um, and understand how I would be able to support them for the year. And then after I went through my role in that coaching menu, they had a roadmap and I printed this. And what they had to do is they had to go through all six of these and they had to get a star. So this was our scoreboard. And the way that they came in the room, they were with pairs. So that was their teams. Um, so it was either groups of two or groups of three. And the teachers worked together to um, kind of walk through some new or some technology that they knew. And again, they were problem solving, they were clicking, they were getting into things, they were creating accounts. And then I was able to walk around and support teachers individually or in small group. So for example, with Google Classroom, they had to watch a video on just best tips when it comes to Google Classroom organization and how to set up their classrooms and just some ideas for them. And then they were able to go ahead and create their Google Classroom for this one. Once they did that, they got an X on the number one. And then number two, they had to create their Google signature and photo. So if they knew how to do that, they didn't need to watch the videos, but the videos were there to support them if I was unavailable to support them at that time. And then for Vivi, the way that I did this is I had them actually connect. So it is like our way of having them connect to their projectors. 
And here were the directions. So I printed these out for the teachers and I also had a digital copy for them. And they were able to follow the steps and try to connect. So rather than having me explain it and just watching me, they had to actually do it. And so this was really nice because I think it's going to take off a lot of stress when they go back because one, they know where the directions are. And then two, they're able to, um, they were able to practice and change some of the sharing settings as well. And then we went over talking points, which is a website and they logged in and then they just told me how they could use this idea with their parents. If they were able to do that again, they got checks as they were completing these activities. And then GoGuardian, they were to see me. Um, there is a GoGuardian Academy, so they could have completed that uh, later down the road if they wanted to. Um, and we actually did like a live demo with GoGuardian. So we kind of waited until the end to do that just because of uh, some staff knew it and others didn't. And then they went to class link and they were to explore different programs. So again, they're going to these resources and they were actually clicking and learning kind of where do I find this information and building some of those problem solving skills that they're going to need. And then they were also seeing a way that they could do this with their students. So there was the scoreboard and then we reflected at the end. <clears throat> so at the very end, I just had them complete a quick Google form that I just like to use for follow-up information. So like email, their name, what questions they have, and then how do they want my support? Do they want weekly meetings, monthly meetings, bi-weekly check-ins? Uh, do they want to reach out or maybe an other? So then I am able to use this. I send them a follow-up email with any questions they had usually the next day. And then I also will email them, hey, send me your planning time. I saw that you wanted a weekly meeting. Happy to do so, just let me know what time works best for you. And then I will set up that reoccurring calendar invite. Then the next thing was um, the campus, the compass points. So North, what do they still need? What excites them? What worries them? And then what are their next steps? So we were able to focus in on this compass points to just kind of say, oh, what else do you need rather than I'm good? Like they were able to kind of reflect and really think about what, what their next steps are and what maybe excited them about what activities or what applications we have here. And then I just thanked them uh, and just reminded them again that I was there to support you. Um, so it was just, again, it was really helpful for me to kind of have them start to problem solve and explore when it comes to all of the things for uh, new teachers rather than just sitting and listening to me.